Hi, my name is Karis Park, and I'm going to go over with you the four different methods of approximating the area under the curve. So the first one is LRAM. Um, it's the left rectangular approximation method. So at first, you're going to have to find the spacing, but you have to see if um, the spacing is even or uneven because um, if they're uneven, you have to get the spacing for each interval. And I'm going to show you examples later, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So spacing is defined as h, so in order to get the h, if it is even, you have to do the highest x value minus the lowest x value and then divide it by the number of rectangles. The number of rectangles is always going to be given to you in the problem. Um, and then if the spacing is uneven, you would have to do um, this equation for every single um, interval, and you'll see that later. Um, so the second step is to, to start with the f of x value with the leftmost x value, so the lowest x value. So the f of x value with the highest x value is not going to be used. And the third step is you're going to use the rectangular, the rectangle area, which is length times height. And the height is actually the width, but you're, you're going to um, notate it as the h. And the f of x is going to be the length of it, as you will see over here. I'll explain that later. But here's a problem. So if this is given, and the question is use LRAM and four rectangles. So first, you're going to see, is this even? Is the spacing even? Well, yes, because it is going up by 0 0.25, 0 0.25, plus 0 0.25, and it keeps going. So what you're going to do is you're going to do um, the spacing formula as I gave over here. So it's going to be the highest x value, which is 2, and the lowest x value, which is 1, and you're going to subtract and then divide by the number of rectangles, which is 4. So I did that right here, and you get 1 fourth. So thankfully, this is even spacing, so it's going to be a lot less work than if it was uneven spacing. So first, you would start off with the leftmost value because this is LRAM, and you're just going to do this times the h, and then you would keep going times h times h, and then 10, and then this is times h. And as I said over here in step two, you're going to not use the highest x value. So you're going to take this out, okay? Um, yeah, so this can be also notated, this can be notated as this. It's just easier to um, write down. Um, as you can tell, because this is even spacing, you can do this. You can just do the height times and then these y, I mean f of x values, and it's just a lot easier to calculate and a lot of less um, space. Uh, so as you can see here, this is an LRAM. So these are the rectangles. So this is the this is the actual curve, and we're trying to approximate the area under it. But as you can see, there are some spaces that we don't um, put in when we calculate this area. This is actually going to be an underestimate because these rectangles don't have this in it, these spaces. So as you can see here, you're just going to take the left, um, the left corner of this rectangle and that's why you exclude the, the rightmost value. So as I said here, you exclude the f of x value with the highest x value because we take the left um, top corner of the rectangle. So now if we go into right RAM, oh sorry, R RAM, which is right rectangular approximation method, this is actually going to be an overestimate, which is the opposite of L RAM. So we're going to go through the same steps. It is going to be finding the spacing, and uh, we just went over this in the last slide. And then you would start with the f of x value with the highest x value, and you would not use the f of x value with the lowest x value. Um, Moving on, this is the same thing because we're using rectangles and it would just be length times height. And here's an example. So as you can see here, 1, 3, 9, these are not evenly spaced x values. So this is plus 2 and this is plus 6. So you would have to um, calculate the, the spacing each time that you're calculating each uh, rectangle. So as you can see here, the spacing is 2. Um, so then this is here, and then the second spacing is going to be 6. And you're just going to multiply um, by the length, because as I said, this is the 
um, rectangle area formula and you're going to use 7 and 3 because you're going to exclude the f of x value with the lowest x value because as you can see here, this is the actual curve and we want the area over here. But as you can tell, these rectangles, they go over the curve. So this is going to be an overestimate. But again, here, the rectangles are falling at the top right corner and the curve is going to follow um, these points. So this is the RAM. Uh, moving on, this is the MRAM. This is the midpoint rectangular approximation method. So we're going to go through the same thing except in the spacing for MRAM, you cannot use if unevenly spaced. So the question cannot be asked um, if for an MRAM if it was unevenly spaced. So the second step here is use f of x value in between each spacing. So we'll go over that um, in this problem here and it'll be a lot easier to see. But um, the third is also we're going to be using rectangle. So it's going to be like times height and this is what we stated before. But if we look at this problem right here, so this is the data given and it says use MRAM and two rectangles. So first of all, you can see that this is evenly spaced because you go point you go up by 0.25 and then the same thing over here. So evenly spaced. So that's the good news because we're using MRAM. It has to be evenly spaced. Then we're going to calculate the spacing, which is going to be 2, which is the highest x value, minus 1, which is the lowest x value, and divide it by the number of rectangles, which is 2. So you come out to get 1 half. And in MRAM, as I said in step 2, use f of x value in between each spacing. So in between... Um, one half is going to be one fourth because you just divide this by two, which is going to be one half times one half, and that's one fourth. So if this spacing is one half, and if this spacing is one half, you would use the um, f of x value in between, so it's going to be 1.25. That's the x value of what you're going to use. So as you can see here, um, the spacing is going to be one half, and then you're going to um, put this f of, f of x value and this f of x value because it's in between each of the spacings. So this can be also written as this. It's the exact same thing. It's just more concise. This is more concise. But if we look um, in this graph here, this is going to show that you're going to use the midpoint of each of these rectangles. So this curve is going to be like that. Um, this is, um, as you can see here, it's both an overestimate and an underestimate, as you can see what I colored in. But yeah. Um, moving on, this is the last slide. This is the um, TRAM, trapezoidal approximation method. So this is an average of LRAM and RAM. So if you actually get um, this and you calculate the LRAM and the MRAM, I mean, sorry, and the RAM, and you divide it by 2, then you would get TRAM. Um, so, first you're going to find the spacing. This is what we went over before. It's the same thing. It does not need to be evenly spaced. Um, so if it was unevenly spaced, you would have to, again, calculate the spacing for each interval. And then the second step would be use f of x with the highest and lowest x value once and and the other x values twice. So again, I'll explain that um, later on in this example. But moving on to step three, uh, trapezoid area is going to be one half times base one plus base two times the height. So this can be rewritten as one half times, and then this is the f of x value, and this is another f of x value, and you're going to multiply it by the spacing. So if we look at this problem, it's a lot easier to understand once we look um, in these problems, but here's the data, and then it says use TRAM. Um, so luckily we got an evenly spaced problem, but if we didn't, again, we would have to calculate each of the spacings. But um, yeah, so this is the spacing, and then using uh, here, we would look at here. So one half times, so it's going to be the um, first f of x value and then the second f of x value. So this is 5 
and 7. So you're going to add these two and then multiply by the height. And we're going to do the same thing. So now we're going to move on to these two. It's going to be 1 half times 7 and 3, and then you multiply by that, by the spacing. And then you would do the same thing for this. You would do 3 times 10 and keep the spacing. And then lastly, add 1 half times and then 10 plus 8, and then you multiply the spacing. So this might be a little confusing, but if we look at this graph here, it's a lot easier to understand. So let's say that this point was 100 and this is 99. So if we want to calculate what's under this curve, um, as you can see here, this is a trapezoid. So when you calculate an area of a trapezoid, you're going to do 1 half times and then base 1 plus base 2, as we said before, times height. So the height here is going to be whatever f, sorry, whatever x1 minus x0 is. But let's say that's 1. So it's going to be 1 half times, and then you would do this, because this is base 1, and then base 2. So it would be 100 plus 99, and you multiply that by this. But now we also want to calculate this trapezoid. So we're going to add all of these three areas together. So let's calculate this one. The base, the two bases are going to be here and here. As we can see, this point is 99 and this point is 67. So we're going to do 1 half times 99 plus 67 and then multiply it by the spacing, which is going to be x2 minus x1. Let's say that is 1. So yeah. Um, and then you would add these two and then this is the final one that we have to go over. This is going to be 1 half times base 1, which is 67, plus base 2 right here, which is 44, and times spacing, as we said, is going to be 1, but it's actually going to be x uh, this minus this. But as you can see, we use these values once, and we use these values twice, because each of these trapezoids are going to be using these twice as you can see. Um, but yeah, uh, tram is barely used compared to um, LRAM and RRAM and MRAM, but it's still good to know how to calculate tram. Thank you for watching.